Well, she returned one last time to the role of Shelley Pfefferman to close out the Pfefferman story on the Transparent Music Hell finale on Amazon. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Judith Light. Thank you for sitting down and talking to me, Judith. Of course, um, Sam. Nice to see you. Yeah, this, uh, you know, Transparent has never been afraid to sort of stretch its storytelling into different types of stories with flashbacks and fantasy, but it's never been a musical like this, uh, just a full-out musical production. So what was it, when did it, was it decided to be a musical and how did you find out that it was gonna take that giant leap? Well, um, when we knew that we were closing out the series, um, Jill Soloway, our creator, and her sibling Faith um, had always had in mind that Transparent could be a musical. And if you look at it from the beginning, you can see that it really always had that um, uh, possibility. And so when they knew that all along, and there were a couple of places and times through the series um, that you could see that some of that might be possible. And one of them was the end of the third season when Shelley sings on the, um, on the ship. Um, and uh, I hesitated because Shelley always called it a boat, um, <laughs> but she kept being corrected and told that it was a ship. So um, anyway, they um, felt that this would be a prime opportunity to do a musicale finale or the musicale finale, which is what <laughs> we what we have called it. Um, so it was it was always in, somewhere in there um, that we would we would speak to that, um, and then. Um, Faith is a, um, a, a musical genius mm -hmm. and started coming up with all these different songs and the story was being crafted um, and all of us, we heard about it and we all said yes. I mean, every time that Jill talked to us about doing anything, uh, we, as, as much as we could, we all stayed open and, and this was something that we were all really open to doing. And so was Amazon. I mean, really props to Amazon for um, letting us be uh, in that kind of completion for the, for the whole series. Right. And as you said, we have seen uh, specifically you sing on the show, uh, which was a great moment. But um, in terms of producing a musical number, did you have to prepare differently? Were there vocal lessons or what was the rehearsal process oh, like for this? Oh, totally. I mean, there was great preparation for this. I mean, we did shoot it in one month. We shot it from, I think it was January 8th um, to um, February 8th, uh, 2019. And, um, but there was preparation. We all did vocal work. I had a wonderful uh, coach that I was working with here in New York, Matt Farnsworth. And so we did that. We also, um, we did a lot of uh, physical preparation. Ryan Heffington, our choreographer. Um, Faith Soloway was in the booth with us when we were recording, and Previn, our musical director. So there were a lot of people on the team, um, and, and I know that I'll, I won't, get everybody's name, but there were a, 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 a tremendous, it was a tremendous team and this energetic force that came together and allowed this to, to, to go forward. And I remember the day that we did the first, you know, often you do a table read um, for um, Amazon and they give notes and um, this was different. Um, everybody from Amazon came to hear us sing some of the songs, um, read the script, uh, do some of the choreography. And at the end of it, they were just in tears. And um, they were so moved by the whole uh, dynamic of what had been worked on prior to that and created. So, you know, we did, uh, let's see, we did stuff in November. We did stuff in December. We did stuff at the beginning of January. And then uh, we just started filming. Wow. That's a pretty crazy schedule. Um, you know, one of the one of the new actors that you have fantastic chemistry with uh, and get a lot of numbers with was Shakina Nafak, uh, who who was great in this. And it's so interesting because we got to know Mora through several seasons, and she kind of embodies. It's a new person embodying that energy and that character because Shelley puts on her own play about her family. So, what was it like for you? Um, working with someone, it's kind of like a meta experience watching her 
also embody Mora in a way. She's remarkable. Um, not only is she infinitely talented, her soul and her spirit and her generosity um, and her humility coming in, being, being a producer as well. Um, I, I don't know if you're aware that Alexandra Billings and Shakina were both uh, producers on the show this year uh, for, the, for this musical. And her, it was her generosity of spirit and her speaking to all different kinds of issues uh, with her heart, her soul, her intelligence. So there was this very, um, it, it was like an energetic flow. And I don't mean to sound sort of, you know, woo woo about it, but that was, that was what the feeling was. And uh, she also knew that she had um, been um, brought in to, to support and to be there uh, with her very talented, generous soul. And there's a, a, a scene that we have that I really treasure. Um, there was a, a, there's a song that's called Your Shoes mm -hmm. that, um, and it makes me emotional when I think about it, that um, we felt very strongly, everybody felt very strongly about having in, the, in, the, uh, in this piece. And um, when people see it, I think they'll understand what I'm talking about, about her generosity and her talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that flow is very evident that you speak about between your, your scenes. It's a lot of beautiful, simple moments, I think. Wow. Um, there's, was there, you know, because Jeffrey Tambor quits the series, was there ever any hesitancy about coming back or, or questions of how do we kind of finish up the story? Nobody, nobody knew. I mean, it, it's a, it was living in the uncertainty and the unknowing. And when Jill and Faith had this idea and brought it to Amazon, and, you know, that's why I say props to Amazon. It's like, you want to do what? Um, and then there was this um, creation that came out of what do we do? And we don't know what we do. And we all lived in the we don't know. And then this came out of that. Yeah. Um, something that's always struck me about the whole series of Transparent is that we root for this family so much, and yet they also all have, they deal with such matters of selfishness as well, you know? <laughs> matters and, of, wait, matters of what? Selfishness. Uh, you, know? you mean narcissism? <laughs> yeah, sure. That's another word for it. <laughs> me, mine, only me, nobody else, <laughs> me, my, my upset, my feelings. Oh, God. And, and people would come up to and say, I cannot bear you. I cannot <laughs> bear your family. I, you, and I love you. And it's so human. I, I, I interrupted you, please. Go, go, go That's ahead. Okay. That's okay. Um, I, I was just going to say, you, you get this really lovely moment where Shelly kind of overcomes that a bit in this finale, where she finally sits down with her kids um, and has that moment at, at, the, um, at the memorial where she says, you know, I didn't hold you, I held on to you, and there's a difference. Um, so I just wanted to ask you, what was filming that scene like and finally getting to that place? with Shelley? You know, when you, when you have a character that you, that you play for so many years, and it is as geniusly conceived as every single character in the series is, you watch a, a progression and ultimately you long for a transformation at some level and that's what this moment is and that is again um jill's um awareness sensitivity their um genius in conceiving these characters and so it's not just shelly in that moment that's having a transformation it is every one of us in the mix of that scene. And it is a powerful um, exchange with each other. And it was very, um, 
hard emotionally for us to get through it. I don't mean, you know, we didn't we didn't have the emotion that was there. We it was more the knowing that we were ending and what the what was what we were carrying with us that had been happening the four years prior to that. So the depth of emotion that was present for each and every one of us was uh, was it was deep and 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 potent and it, and it was just it, you know there were moments where we weren't sure we were going to be able to to make it through it without you know it's like you can't you can't have that kind of an emotion through the entire scene otherwise it dissipates it's like you go okay like that's enough but the, and we were guided by Jill through that mm -hmm. whole dynamic of that scene yeah is it ever, you know, because Transparent is really, I think, known for having sequences like that. The, the writing is just fantastic and deep. Was it ever kind of disorienting, um, thinking, how do I bring this character who does not sing her emotions into musical mode? Was that a, ever a disorienting transition? No, no. One of the things that Jill always said, and so did Faith, is that when a character can no longer speak, they have to sing. When they can no longer sing, they have to dance. So it's a progression of emotion from speaking to singing to moving. And so none of that, and none of it was um, extraneous, um, inappropriate. Um, it was always right in the moment, precisely because of the way that it was written. Right. And the way this and the way the songs were written and then, you know, by faith and then by the way Ryan Heffington was giving us the choreography and then how um, how uh, it was that Jill directed us. Yeah. And you certainly get to dance quite a bit in um, my, your boundary is my trigger, which I think is one of the best numbers of the, the whole thing. And, <laughs> and a lot of people don't you know, a lot of the songs are sort of maybe more naturalistically presented just in the in the regular sets, but you get a huge Broadway number <laughs> on stage. What was it like to get to suddenly storm the stage as, as Shelley Pfefferman? Um, it was it was it was really daunting. Um, it, it's, it's interesting uh, that you say this. Uh, the Jill has always pushed me in the most um, exciting, frightening, on the edge kind of ways. And this was one of them. And the day that I, uh, I was shooting something in New York, I believe that's right. And then I came back to LA and um, the day that I pre-recorded some of the song, um, th that was also the day that, um, they had me go over to where Ryan Heffington was teaching um, the choreography. And so I, the, Ryan said to me, do you want to just jump in with us and do some of the choreography? And I started that and that was in November. And I realized what it was going to take physically mm -hmm. to, to be able to do this. And it was so thrilling and so exciting. And, um, I just thought this is one of the greatest opportunities of my life, of my, my certainly of my career, but definitely of my life. And I, I just kept throwing myself in there. Um, and the, the kind of um, place that Jill creates is um, a, a very safe place to express. You can never do anything wrong. You can't make mistakes. You you know you may think you look like an idiot, but everybody is there to support you. And so it was. Um, and and the day that we shot it, we just kept shooting it over and over and over and over again. And everybody was present, and everybody was supporting everybody. And I felt lifted up by the whole um, the whole family. I thought by everybody that was there. It was just a a, a truly um, once in a lifetime experience. Yeah. Well, speaking of your career. Um, I'm going to take it back a little bit because at Gold Derby, what we do is kind of awards. So um, you have a really fascinating awards track record because you have a habit of winning them back to back when you win uh, because you've got two daytime Emmys uh, for One Life to Live in the same category, drama actors, and then you uh, got two consecutive Tony Awards. 
were featured actress in a play, um, other desert cities and the assembled parties back to back in the same category. So um, if you were to win an, an Emmy, should we just expect, is there another project coming down where you would win? What is it like just claiming two years in a row? Listen, I'm, I, I could make some sort of silly, cute comment about it. But tr the truth is, I am, um, I am really appreciative and grateful for the support of the communities that I, that I work in. Uh, and I, I don't, I, yes, there is another project that's coming down the pike and it's the politician for, um, Ryan Murphy for Netflix. However, I don't think about it like that. And I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't think about, um, what am I going to get or uh, awards are wonderful. They are an acknowledgement from your peers, but it's also that, um, being nominated is uh, um, oh, uh, uh, is truly an honor. Um, you know that you've been selected with a, a few other people, and I've had that opportunity as well. So, I I don't the way to answer that is I I don't know. Um, I just know that I'm appreciative of what I've received so far and very, very grateful for the opportunities and for the people who've given me those opportunities. Um, the dynamic of as I have evolved as a, as a, a performer, as an artist, um, I have been given these uh, amazing opportunities now mm -hmm. um, with Amazon and Jill um, and, and Faith and, um, and now with Ryan Murphy. I'm so... Um, Really, I'm really been blessed. Yeah. And, you know, just before I have to let you go, I, you were also singled out by the Tony Awards for the Isabel Stevenson Award um, for, for your activism uh, and advocacy for the LGBTQ community, which you have been doing that for a long time, long before many people. Um, and I, I'm just wondering, as you look back on your experience with Transparent, does it seem sort of kismet that you were you got to be involved with the show that really changed the conversation around those topics? I'm never clear how to talk about those kinds of things, whether they're kismet or fate or the universe just unfolding itself. Um, all I know is that I feel the same way as I do about what we were just talking about in terms of awards. I feel grateful. Um, I knew that when I had that first dialogue with Jill, which was a Skype call, and we talked about, we didn't really talk much about Transparent, or I didn't see the script. I, my conversation with them was really about our advocacy for the LGBTQIA plus community. And I knew that I so, I just, so wanted this to happen. I wanted to be a part of this. And I don't know that we, we, we added to the conversation that was already in play. The trans community had begun to come out. Um, it, it was coming out of the shadows even more as we entered. And it was people at Amazon like Joe Lewis who saw the script for Transparent and said, I want to do that. I want to take that on. And so I came as part of a group of people that were longing to be part of that uh, dialogue. Uh, and part of that transformation, um, which I call it, rather than change. I don't think change is really what was happening. I think it's really a transformation of, um, of the human condition and how we all relate to that. So I've had other opportunities as well. I had the opportunity um, to be in the assassination of Johnny Versace um, that Ryan Murphy did, um, also about um, uh, the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and so I've had these opportunities along the way. Is it kismet? I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I just know I'm grateful. Well, for Grateful to have you in it, and is, is a fantastic send off to to a series that only could end uh, in such a musical fashion. So, thank you for sitting down with me, Judith. Everyone who's watching, please subscribe to Gold Derby. Make sure you keep up to date with us throughout Emmy season. And Judith, thank you once again for your time.
Thank you, Sam. So lovely to see you.